Morning lads, how you doing? Welcome back to the Blue Lounge. Welcome back to the channel. Lads, I'm going to be addressing two players in today's video. Moses Caicedo and Mohamed Kudus. We're going to be looking at the latest um, comments by the Zerbi in regards to the Caicedo situation. I'm also going to be addressing something in regards to Mohamed Kudus. Kudus um, and it's something that's been overlooked by quite a few people. I'm going to be addressing that towards the end of the video. Um, his deal seems to be progressing quite well. Uh, but there is an element that I think a lot of people are not looking at at the moment. And I'm going to address it and you know, we'll see uh, We'll see what conclusion we come to. That will be the second part of the video. Uh, before we continue, as always, lads, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Um, let's look at what Deserby said early hours of this morning. Let's have a look. So this is what Deserby said on Kaiseido as per Ben Jacobs. Deserby on Kaiseido. There is no deadline in brackets for resolving things. I only care about his attitude. My work is to be a coach, not to manage the transfer market. I am happy if he stays, but will play without him as well. We have to be ready to find another midfielder if he leaves. He also goes on to say, um, the Zerbi also confirms Caicedo will play the second half against Brentford on Saturday. Now, so in regards to these comments, I have a few of my own. So the Zerbi said there is no deadline. Actually, the Zerbi, you are mistaken. There is a deadline. And that deadline is the 1st of September 2023. That's when the transfer window will shut. And if you haven't, if Brighton haven't uh, came to an agreement with Chelsea Football Club by then, you have got yourself a very disgruntled, unhappy midfielder playing for you. It is clear, it has been made very clear that Caicedo believed at least his people the people around him his his team believed that Brighton Hove Alpion you deserve be yourself specifically gave him a gentleman's agreement that he would be allowed to move on once a substantial bid was put forward for him if he was happy to move to another club that had made a substantial bid he would be allowed to go that has not been honored by Brighton Hove Albion that has not been honoured by De Zerbi. Therefore, you will have a disgruntled midfielder on your squad, in your squad. Chelsea Football Club will not be paying you, will not be paying Brighton Hove Albion the figure that they have alluded to. And again, they haven't clarified the figure that they want. But they will not be paying you £100 million for Moses Caicedo. The negotiations are ongoing. We know face-to-face -face talks have been ongoing for quite some time. But it looks like Chelsea may be losing interest. It does look like Chelsea may be looking elsewhere if Brighton Hove Albion continue to go, to go down this path. So you say there's no deadline. I'm telling you there is a deadline. Okay, You will have a disgruntled midfielder on your squad. And as per the Zerbi, Kaiseido will be taking part in the Brentford game on Saturday. Um, let's see how well he plays. Let's see what kind of attitude he's going to bring on that pitch. He's a professional footballer. You'd expect him to not have, um, not to be influenced by what is going on. But let's see what happens. Let's see if he does get influenced by what is going on. Lads, my position on this, as I've said in the past, I think Chelsea should start looking elsewhere. Or at least indicate that they are no longer as interested in Moses Caicedo as they were initially when they came to Brighton and started to negotiate. I think the fact that Brighton feel that Chelsea are all in for this deal is only making our position weaker. I think if Chelsea start to look at other players, start to discuss with other players, central midfielders, defensive midfielders, I think Brighton will start to reevaluate and readjust their position in regards to Moses Caicedo. That is how I see it. I want to talk about Mohamed Kudus. Let me show you something. Okay, before I get into what I'm about to show you, I just want to make this clear. I think Mohamed Kudus is a very, very good player. He's skillful. He's strong, physically very, very strong. 
He has good pace, good agility, um, and he is versatile in his positioning where he can play. He can literally play anywhere across the uh, um, uh, the front line. Um, attacking midfielder, winger, he can do the lot. He can do the lot. So I don't think Mohamed Kudus is a bad player. On the contrary, I think he is a fantastically talented player who does have a lot of potential. Um, he's going to be 23 in August. He's currently 22. Next month is his birthday. I think 2nd of August is his birthday. So he's going to be 23 very soon. However, there is an aspect that I want to share with you, and that is his injury history. So if you look at the screen, he has missed um, 28 days this April, 6 days this January, 83 days November 2021, 62 days September 2021, 26 days February 2021, 79 days January 2021, and 7 days back in 2020. Now, he has had hamstring injuries, a rib fracture, ankle injuries, fitness issues, the one that concerns me is this one here. Meniscal injury. Meniscal injury that put him out for 79 days back in January 2021. For those of you who don't know what a meniscal injury is, that's a cartilage injury in his knees. Okay, now that to me is a serious injury. A player... um of his physicality, of his mobility, having an issue with his knees could be quite problematic. And he was out for 79 days. That's a substantial amount of time. Um, like I said, he's had what, um, four long-term injuries in the past, in the past three years. Um, so he has been out for quite some time. He has missed a ton of games as per the screen. But that's, Hamad Kudus is injury prone. This is a problem. So as I just showed you, he does have a quite serious injury situation. Um, should Chelsea still go in for him? Is he going to be a productive player? Is he going to be someone that we can rely on, depend on? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. I would love... Uh, to have him come to Chelsea um, if that issue is resolved, if his injuries are, you know, overcome, if he has overcome those injuries. Um, he hasn't had a knee injury since then. I'm not sure if he had surgery. I'm not sure how they addressed it. To be honest, I, um, I haven't done a lot of research. I've done a little bit of research. And the, the research that I've done, I've just showed you the bulk of the information. So, lads, um, Mohamed Kudus, his injury issue might need to be addressed uh, before we go all in for him. I'm sure Chelsea Football Club are aware of his situation and they're probably doing their due diligence in respect to him. But let's just see how it pans out. But, you know, people shouldn't just jump in, you know, jump in and start backing a player without, you know, really looking at his history. He's been recommended by Ten Hag. He's been recommended by a lot of uh, people who have managed him, coached him. He is a special player. My only concern is his injury, and I wanted to share that with you guys. Listen, guys, um, thank you for the support you're showing to my channel. Um, really appreciate all the new subscribers that have uh, joined the family, joined the Blue Lounge. Uh, let's continue to do so. Let's continue to grow the channel. Very much appreciate it. Have a great day, lads. I'll catch you in my next upload. Take care of yourselves, and peace.